Well, I guess what they say about some days you're the bug and some days you're the windshield is true. And today I was definitely the windshield. I got incredibly lucky simply because uh, an, a, um, a friend of a friend, yeah, one of those kind of deals, um, knew that lock sport or lock picking was a hobby of mine. And he ha also happened to have bought a U-Haul uh, storage franchise. And he bought it a couple of weeks ago and come to find out that all of the rented or unrented units were secured by one of these padlocks. And the previous owner had left with the keys. So he was left with about 42 units with these American padlocks uh, securing them. And he had no keys. So he called in a couple of locksmiths and the lowest bid he had was $30 to pick them each. So 30 times 40 starts to add up in a hurry. And if, of course, if he wanted keys, that was going to be $10 per key extra per lock. So 40 bucks. So we're talking $1,600. Uh, that's pretty, pretty steep. So as you see, these are model 7260s. And uh, so he called me in simply because he'd heard that I might be able to help him out and pick these. And he told me that if I could pick them, I could have them. And of course, I've picked a lot of American locks before. And I said, yeah, of course, Not, absolutely. And uh, then I made, then I started taking a closer look. I'd never seen a 7260. But then when I looked at the bottom, you can see right away it's a little bit different than the normal lock. Uh, tubular locks, seven pins. Now I know American padlocks are problems uh, because they're usually packed full of spools and serrated pins and they're just a, can be really difficult to open. And uh, I can only imagine it was even harder with these. Now these are quite substantial, these 7260s. In fact, here's a Model 700 by comparison. So they're quite a bit larger, very massive locks. And so again, I was intimidated by size. And I thought, crap, I'll never be able to pick these things. Because in order to pick this, I'm going to have to pick it probably three or four times in order to get through there, and in order to open that hasp. Well, there are tools for this. In fact, I've had one on order, a Peterson Pro 1, for quite some time, many, many months, and I guess they're back ordered. And uh, he hasn't been able to get it to me. And all I had to work with was either a single pin pick or a tool in the bottom of my bag that I've only successfully used on like pretty inexpensive bicycle tubular locks. This one's by South Ord, and I think they're pretty much all the same. Uh, just a handle, looks like a screwdriver. But if you look closely, you can see that on the back there are these little needles. There are seven of them, one for each of the pins on the lock. And then the front of it is grooved. Uh, let's see if I can again get it to focus. You can see it's just like a key, and these needles fit in the groove. And when we put the tension right, and we stick it into the groove, and then we rotate it, uh, those, those security pins will cause these needles to move up, and it will self-impression a lock. So pretty slick, but I didn't think it would work. So there we go. I, anyway, the, these washers, some people get irritated with them, but I, I've left mine on. I, and the way you begin is you simply loosen this nut and then you can either push the needles down individually or I use the washer and that's why I like it because it, it makes it easy to zero quick. Push the needles down past the end and then I just pick up a lock and I just grab one at random here, here's a lock one, and then push it on the side of the lock and that will put them all at the zero position. The next thing is tension. Uh, how much tension do you put on it? And I probably I start out with a pretty low tension, and I discovered that trial and error on these locks uh, today. I just give it probably an eighth of a turn, just enough to put a little bit of tension on it to keep these needles from sliding out so freely. Once we've done that, it's just like impressioning a regular lock. You just stick it in, and then we rotate. And when we rotate it back and forth, there's a couple of techniques. Some go around, but I found that this works pretty good. And I just rotate it back and forth, and as it hits those pins, one of them will bind and it will push that uh, needle up just a little bit, just enough to help form a key. And that's exactly what happened here. We formed it, and I couldn't believe it the first one we opened. It popped it open. And so, of course, I was very happy. Well, the nice thing about this tool that you really can't do with single pin picking is that once you've opened one of the locks, if there's any chance that the other locks have the same key, you simply tighten this nut and that completely locks the needles down and of course when we do that we have a key, a working key and then we can grab any of the others oh, here's one that's locked uh, and then we just sit it, slide it in and it can only go in one way if I can get my coordination to cooperate and then we open all of the other 41 locks so 
this $50 tool or whatever it was I paid for it several years ago uh, more than paid for itself today. Good investment and to open all of these locks took me less than 30 minutes. So anyway, I told you I was incredibly lucky and today I definitely was not the bug, I was the windshield and I won this one, which doesn't happen off, nearly often enough. Anyway, thanks for your time, stay safe and of course uh, always stay legal.